I arrive at the station at 5.15 and um, immediately look at the bulletin that's been left for me by my news editor the night before. At that point, if something has happened overnight, I have to decide what needs to be taken out and I then write the story into the bulletin. Whilst they're doing that in the morning, um, I'll come in, power the station up, um, run through my running order, making sure that we've got the tapes that we need, the slides, any supers that we've got, um, and fit all that in to make sure that I can roll it uh, and deal with everything. There's just the two of us here in the morning. Uh, we look after the four newsers that go out in the morning for GMTV. Um, they run at 10 past 6, 20 to 7, 7.30 and 8.30. So our bulletins go out live. A lot of people question us and say, well, is this, are your bulletins live? Do you do it the night before? And I have actually also been asked, do you commute to the MTV studios? Which I don't know if you notice now, we do actually make a point of saying the news does come from Channel Television. <laughs> Good morning and another local news from Channel Television. At that meeting, Karen Rankin, the news editor, and myself as programme editor, discuss the likely prospects for the day, the strands, the regular features in Channel Report, which will appear every night, and also the day-to-day -day news that's occurring. We um, decide which reporters will cover which stories, what resources will be um, allocated to, to each story, and to a large extent, what sort of duration that story might be in, the, in that night's Channel Report and in the lunchtime news. The most important start to the day is always the news conference between the two newsrooms in Guernsey and Jersey. And we do that over our live microwave, so we go into the studio and we go through the day, what's going to happen and what have you, and what stories are about, what features, what's the strand tonight, what's the strand next week, what are we doing for sport at the weekend. So we have the morning meeting and after that either myself or Dan will go up to the police station where we look at the press books that they've got up there and we look at the daily court sheets to see if there's anything interesting to cover. And then it's a question of ringing round, ringing politicians, finding the stories um, and then checking the availability of the cameras and going out and filming the stories. It can be a glamorous job, it can, yes, but uh, it can also be very hard work as well and uh, I think it's a good combination of the two sometimes. I do cover Jersey cameramen when they're on holiday and I sometimes have to fly over for a day or, or a week or something like that or we have to go to Herm or Sark and uh, occasionally shoot features or, or news items over there. On this, yeah, on this tape, yeah. The reporter comes in with a story into editing and we've got obviously interviews and pictures to cover yeah. the interview. Um, we'll chop out the relevant parts of an interview so it doesn't drag on for ages and ages, um, cover up the pictures and we decide what pictures go where and try and make it as interesting and as, as fluid as, as we possibly here can. The town church. In fact, at one point, boats were even moored here. The main source of stories, I suppose, the sort of bread and butter issues, are the stories which revolve around our political life. Uh, invariably, we end up going to the Royal Square to interview politicians down there about whatever the, uh, the topic is. It seems to be uh, almost like an outside studio for us. We cover news in the smaller islands um, through our correspondents. We have Nigel Stone Sands in Alderney, who um, is both reporter and cameraman, and um, he's, um, he's, he's very conscientious in covering all the events in Alderney and making sure that we know about it. And if there is a major event there that uh, Nigel feels he can't handle on his own, then I know that uh, lots of reporters and, cam and camera crews are delighted to travel from either Jersey or Guernsey to Alderney to cover the stories with him. Because we cover all the islands, we quite often find ourselves working up in Alderney, which is one of the favourite haunts of the crew. Sometimes exciting jobs come in. You might be on a Hercules film and parachutist. Or you might just be in the Royal Square. Well, there are five of us here who work as continuity announcers, stroke presenters. So basically, that involves doing the links between the programmes, saying what's coming up, what's coming later in the evening, the news reading, presenting the daily diary, and also for myself and Charlie, we also do the weekend diary. So it's very varied. Um, I mean, you have a set pattern, but because the news changes every day, and especially around the lunchtime news, it can become quite fraught then, and you get stories changing. So, so that's that's what I enjoy, and I think that goes for the others too, because then you're sort of you're working on your adrenaline. Rough or rough, 
and the outlook from 6am till 6pm tomorrow, rather cloudy at first, then fair with sunny periods. The winds northeastly, fresh force 5 to strong force 6. What can I say about working with Puffin? I mean, he's just, he, I think what we have to understand is that he is the star of the station. From Mummy and Daddy, could you please blow a big kiss? Well, this is Master Control, and it's the main control room of the station, which uh, uh, looks after everything that, that goes out, whether it's commercials, programmes coming from the network, programmes coming from studios, and also with the announcer and the promotion department fill in the gaps between programmes with announcements and trailers for programmes. If you don't have a chance to check it, tell me I'll get it to somebody else. By 4, 4.30. We've, uh, Paul and I, that is, have decided more or less on a rough running order for the programme. And tapes will be coming in, uh, reporters will be coming back with stories, and scripts will be coming into the computer for us to sub and put into that running order. We start off with, um, in fact, a, a, a fax from the, the Met Office, and they supply the isobar charts that we use to us, and also a caption charts which show the various symbols that we use and which positions they should be placed in. Um, and we take that information on board, and we have a set of um, pre-drawn maps and so on, and temp uh, buttons and various uh, temperature buttons and so on that we use. And we, it's a simple procedure of taking that information and laying that over the maps that we've uh, already had. We can actually knock out the weather in, uh, in about 15 minutes, something like that. About uh, quarter to five, if it's myself that's presenting, um, I hopefully by that time have got a little bit of time to go and get made up and ready for the programme, and that takes a little bit of time. It takes me longer than it takes Paul, I have to say. I go back to the newsroom at about um, quarter past five and write our promotion, which is a live promotion which we film in the newsroom at 20 to 6 and that gives people a little taster of what's in the program for that night. In Channel Report tonight, Senator Stuart Sivray is effectively banned from operating as a politician. Is he being fair to the electorate? We'll ask him live at 6 o'clock. Hopefully I can get down to the studio at about 10 to 6. It's more like 5 to 6 or sometimes even 2 minutes to 6 if it's a particularly busy day and we have to get settled um, and ready and relaxed for the start of the programme. And tapes can still be being edited um, on a bit, very busy day, especially states days. That can be quite a hectic time and you might not get a report into the programme until a few seconds sometimes before you start to read the introduction or the link into that uh, particular report. I have uh, control of the programme in terms of all the visuals uh, at which I sit at the control desk here and I actually vision switch at the same time as direct and that will be between the three cameras we have in the studio, uh, between the VT's uh, tape machines which are in our uh, other area here and any other visuals which I need to actually go to to transmit the programme. I go and find out what the running time of the news is at 10.30, or all around 10.30 of an evening. But you have to remember that most of the time it's shorter than the six o'clock, so things have to be condensed down. The late news, that comes up at 10.30. Um, I usually start looking at that around 10 o'clock, uh, maybe have a chat with Marcel or John Jakes, who will be directing it that evening, just to make sure that everything's OK. Uh, it usually follows the main patterns channel report earlier on in the evening, unless, of course, uh, something has broken later on in the evening. There was a real emergency, uh, such as a ship, and we have had that when a, a vessel has got into trouble, then I would immediately call the uh, news editor and we would start to call out extra people and camera people as well. After the late news has gone out, uh, usually things quieten down a little bit because it's getting into the evening and often if there's a film or a longish programme that's going on, there are fewer breaks, so it gives me time then to check the commercials uh, that will be needed for the following day, ready for the morning shift so they don't have to spend part of their, their day doing that. And also we have to prepare the early morning news uh, bulletin. 